Here we have a 2022 Tesla Model 3. Right next to us we have a 2019 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Similar vehicles, but uh, there have been significant changes. Uh, this is the entry level Model 3. The Model 3 is just a rear wheel drive. They don't call it Standard Range Plus uh, or anything like that. It's just a Model 3. Then you have uh, the Model 3 uh, Long Range, which is also all wheel drive. And you have the Model 3 Performance, which is also all wheel drive. So the Model 3 is the entry level Model 3 vehicle. It's only available in rear wheel drive. Um, it has a fully charged range of about 270 miles and uh, it replaces the standard range slash standard range plus. I figure uh, it would be a great uh, idea to do a vehicle comparing the two because I'm sure there's lots of people that are maybe considering a new or slightly used uh, Model 3 or maybe they're considering an older standard range plus. There's a lot of uh, pre-owned standard, standard range pluses on the market. They're pretty great value in the pre-owned market but there might be some reasons you want the newer Model 3. There might be some reasons why you prefer the Standard Range Plus. I actually have a 2019 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. I love it. It's a great vehicle. There are some things I like about my Standard Range Plus, more about the, I mean, the regular Model 3 rear wheel drive like this one. And there's some things about this one that I like a lot that I wish mine had. So, uh, you know, I guess if you're looking for a lot of information, <laughs> Uh, this is going to be a great vehicle for you because we're going to do kind of a deep dive the differences between the two products uh, pros and cons and uh, you know great information and hopefully you'll find it useful and helpful okay so I guess the uh, one of the things to look at uh, to start off is the uh, battery technology and uh, this, use, uh, this uses LFP batteries and I think it stands for uh, lithium iron phosphate uh, that's what it stands for LFP lithium ion phosphate batteries. I'll post it up on the screen the appropriate acronym for LFP uh, lithium phosphate batteries uh, Where the model 3 standard range plus uses lithium ion batteries uh, So Tesla in 2022 they changed the uh, battery on the uh, standard range or I guess the regular rear-wheel drive model 3 to LFP batteries and they don't offer the uh, lithium ion batteries. They still use the, use the lithium ion batteries in the long range and performance version of the Model 3. If you're curious uh, about uh, you know what types of batteries that your vehicle has, um, you can look on this screen right here on the software screen. You click uh, additional information and it'll say, uh, let's see, high voltage battery. All right, lithium iron phosphate. So lithium ion phosphate batteries are unique because with lithium ion batteries uh, for daily use Tesla only recommends you charge them to about 80-90% like my Model 3 I charge to about 85% every day for usable range that gives me about 180 miles of usable range the EPA rating on my Model 3 fully charges about 240 miles uh, you know realistically uh, you know over the years you have a little better battery degradation so when mine's fully charged it's about 221 miles which is about <clears throat> appropriate for the amount of miles I have on it you know you do you lose a little bit of uh, you know energy from your batteries over the years uh, being 2023 and mine's in 2019 uh, so this one uh, you actually uh, can charge to 100% if your vehicle is equipped with the LFP battery Tesla recommends that you keep your charge limit set to 100% even for daily use and that you also fully charge to 100% at least once per week. If your Model 3 has been parked for longer than a week, Tesla recommends driving as you normally would and charge to 100% at your earliest convenience. So these batteries like to be charged to 100% where the lithium ion batteries don't like to be charged to 100%. So that means when fully charged, you can actually have the full EPA range of 260, 270 miles or even if you have a longer range, uh, you know, Tesla, you, you can only uh, charge it to about 80-90%. In fact, some of the, uh, you know, 2019, you know, Model 3 long ranges, uh, when they're, you know, charged to 80-90%, the usable range is about 240-250 miles, not too far off of the fully charged range of an LFP equipped Tesla like this. I guess one disadvantage of the LFP batteries is performance. You know, you know, batteries are kind of like the engines in the car. You can have high performance engines or you can have more economy engines. Like, you know, you can have a Toyota Prius or, or a Toyota Camry four cylinder, or you can have, you know, uh, you know, a Mustang V8. Uh, kind of a similar thing with uh, batteries. The amount of energy a battery can unleash and put into the electric motors, that determines how fast it is. So lithium ion batteries are a little bit more performance oriented. 
So you'll notice that the uh, standard range plus, the older standard range plus uh, Teslas actually have a 0 to 60 of right around 5.2 seconds, where uh, you know this one's about 5.8. And it is noticeable when you get behind the wheel, you can definitely tell that the standard range pluses have a little bit more off the line acceleration. Uh, it's not a huge difference, but it is noticeable. Uh, so if performance is a little bit more important to you, then maybe you might want to consider an older uh, standard range plus with a lithium ion battery to get a little bit better performance. Uh, also, the life of the battery, and obviously this is, you know, this is still to be determined, but they think uh, that the lithium ion batteries equipped Teslas, those batteries will probably last maybe about 300, maybe 500,000 miles. The LFP batteries, obviously these are, you know, they, are, they started putting these in the Teslas in 2022, so we don't have, uh, we don't have a real life examples yet, but there's a potential that those could last 500,000 miles to a million miles which is a, <laughs> a really long time. So um, those are some advantage, advantages of the LFPs. The LFP batteries also weigh more, uh, you know, so the uh, energy density of uh, LFP batteries is not as good as lithium ion batteries. So the car is gonna weigh a little bit more uh, versus a standard range plus. The weight can, you know, affect efficiency. But, you know, I think the being able to change charge the battery to 100% offsets that. But, you know, it also affects, you know, handling and performance, but I think that is a little bit more slight. Okay, uh, so that, I guess that's, uh, you know, the batteries is probably the biggest difference, but there are some other differences that have happened over the years. Uh, in 2021, when they were still putting lithium-ion batteries in the Standard Range Plus uh, Model 3, they did uh, redesign the interior. Uh, so you have this nice, uh, you know, wireless charging pad here, a little bit of a different design for the center console. I definitely think it's better. Uh, the design over there is a little bit different. Also, um, we have a heated steering wheel, uh, which you didn't have in the older Teslas. So that's another difference. And also, if you look at the climate control system, um, if you go to software here, there's another noticeable difference. You can see here for uh, cabin heater, it has a heat pump. Uh, where the older Teslas uh, had what they call, a, I think it's a resistive heater. Uh, both work great, but heat pumps, like a heat pump in your house, they tend to be more efficient. Uh, they started putting in the heat pumps in Teslas in 2021, and uh, you know basically it makes it you know the heating and cooling the vehicle much more efficient, uh, especially in colder temperatures. Uh, you know EVs can uh, suffer from ra range issues in colder temperatures. Uh, so that heat pump being able to heat or you know the vehicle more efficiently is definitely going to take less energy out of the battery. Uh, so that is definitely another thing to consider uh, uh, between the both vehicles. Um, another uh, difference uh, between the two vehicles is uh, some of the software features. So, so they did this update called Boombox, uh, where you can actually talk through the horn, <laughs> or you can play music through the horn. Uh, right now you can hear me talking. It's kind of talking in like a talking in like a scary voice. <laughs> so the megaphone update was a uh, new feature for uh, 2020. So you know 2019 Teslas aren't going to have uh, the megaphone update. Uh, just I guess a different design in the horn. I guess the horns will, will and you can also play music through the horn. Um, and you can make the horn uh, sound like a goat. <laughs> or an old car horn <laughs> or you can make it sound like a fart so I guess that's another difference in the 2019 older Teslas and it's not just you know the standard range plus any Tesla is not going to have all those features so I guess that is a, a slight difference that you'll have with 2022 um, I guess another uh, difference too uh, that we, the Tesla started rolling out is uh, the glass. So you can see on this one, we have the new Tesla double pane glass. They sandwich a sound deadening material in the middle, middle of the glass. Uh, it makes the vehicle a lot quieter. There's definitely a difference. Uh, you can, if you drive one of these back to back versus a Tesla without that uh, new Tesla glass, you can definitely tell the ones of the Tesla glass are a lot quieter. So if we go over this one over here, which is a standard range plus. <laughs> we can see we have the older design on the center console. Uh, we go to soft, uh, we go to, uh, sorry. We go over here 
you go to the toy box, you see there's no, no option at all for a megaphone. Then we take a look over here, and you can see the glass is not uh, the double paned uh, new Tesla glass. It's still pretty quiet, quieter than a lot of uh, gas powered cars, but not as quiet as a vehicle with a Tesla double pane glass. All right, another slight difference on some of the older Teslas is a uh, power rear lift gate, or a power trunk, I should say. Where this one just has a regular uh, manual trunk. <laughs> A little bit dirty in there, but you can see, you know, it's not a huge difference. You could probably install an aftermarket one, or they have ones that are spring-loaded, but having that powerful trunk is a nice feature. Also, uh, another feature that they, uh, I wouldn't say feature, but a design difference uh, that started coming out in 2021 is uh, it's the chrome delete. You'll notice some of the newer Teslas, they have the uh, kind of the matte black door handles and trim. Where some of the earlier Model 3s, the 2019 and earlier, oh, sorry, 2020 and earlier, have uh, the chrome trim and the chrome door handles. That's more of a design preference, but I can see like with automotive styling, the blackout or the darker chrome is kind of a popular uh, style thing that we can see across the board in most luxury makes. Um, and I guess if you really uh, had an earlier Tesla, you can you know get it wrapped. You can go to a wrapping company and they can you know kind of put uh, wrap like they wrap the vehicle on these parts to make it look like it's a chrome delete or it's blacked out without having to paint it. So there you have it. Those are really the biggest differences between the standard range plus Tesla and the new uh, rear wheel drive uh, Model 3 or just regular Model 3 as they call it. Um, and let's look at a difference in the weight out of curiosity. So we look at the gross vehicle weighting on the standard range plus 2019, which is 4,541 pounds. And if we look at the gross vehicle weighting on this 22 uh, Model 3, it's uh, the gross vehicle weighting is 4,711 pounds. So you can see with the uh, LFP batteries, they do add a little bit more weight to the vehicle. Both awesome vehicles. I'm a Tesla owner myself. We have probably about 11 Teslas right now in inventory. We've had hundreds that we've bought and sold. They're very popular vehicles. Uh, I love mine. Uh, the autopilot, which is traffic aware cruise control, makes my life so much easier. Um, I'm at the point where uh, <laughs> I do have other vehicles in my household, but uh, I really prefer to drive my Tesla when it comes to stop and go traffic, driving on the highway. If I have to run errands for the dealership, uh, more often than not, I'm going to take a Tesla of autopilot uh, just because it's uh, the least amount of work to drive. It's one thing, you know, driving around a beautiful, you know, mountain or driving along the coastline in a performance car. But when it comes to daily use, uh, things are different. And uh, I look at the Tesla as almost like an extension of my living space. Um, I love the infotainment system. Um, I love the premium connectivity where I'm a... I love music so I can stream all sorts of music uh, when the vehicle's parked and maybe I'm inside the car with my kids while my wife's doing some shopping. We can put on Netflix uh, for the kids. And the great thing about watching Netflix or YouTube or any of those things is these have great audio systems. So you actually get a pretty awesome cinematic uh, experience inside these vehicles when you're uh, utilizing those features. You can play video games. Um, and the, these cars are constantly getting over their updates. They're constantly improving. Um, there was one recent over there update where they uh, were able to activate uh, the side cameras on the vehicles and now you have uh, blind spot cameras. So that was, uh, I think, uh, Christmas of uh, 2021. Uh, that was a recent update. Uh, but a lot of these vehicles were out for a very long time and uh, you know they didn't have these blind spot cameras and then you have an update and you have a blind spot camera. You know they have updates where they improve uh, the layout of the infotainment system, buttons and stuff like that. Uh, they're constantly uh, doing updates, improving the safety of the vehicle, improving autopilot. Um, and then you have the amazing uh, connectivity with your mobile app. Um, the, the, the Tesla app pretty much replaces your phone. Um, you can uh, unlock the car, you can remotely start the vehicle. If I'm on the phone with someone and they can't find the key for a Tesla, I've unlocked the car and started it and they were able to drive it, you know, with me not even here. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So you can use the, the phone as your key. Uh, when I get out of the shower in the morning, I can heat or defrost a Tesla. 
Um, you can actually uh, pull up live cameras. So these have cameras all around it. So if sentry mode, you can pull up live camera views all around the vehicle. You, they actually just did another update. And this is a recent thing for, you know, since the Model 3s have come out, they've had these interior cameras which weren't activated, but now they have an update where, where you can't, you can not only just pull up the exterior cameras, but you can also pull up the interior camera, which is helpful on dog mode. This has a dog mode, so you can keep your dog in it. I'll say it's a comfortable 76 degrees in here. My owner will return soon. And you can even hop on your camera and check on your pooch. That was a recent update that came a month ago. So these cars are getting updates about every month and they're and they're really uh, making huge improvements all over the place. Uh, I have not seen any other vehicle uh, having updates uh, to this level. And a big part of it is this amazing infotainment system. Uh, you know, since, you know, the majority of the functionality is not tied to hard buttons, it's infinitely configurable. So it's a vehicle that even though it gets older, um, it uh, gets better. And even if you have an older Tesla, my 2019 Tesla, you know, the screen and everything looks pretty much just like this 2022 Tesla. And likewise, it was very similar to 2023. It's kind of like your iPhone. So even though your vehicle gets, uh, you know, older, with the over there updates, you get a lot of the, uh, you know, updated features across the board, whether your vehicle's a 2019 or 2022. Obviously, you don't get everything with the megaphone and stuff like that. For, but for the most part, you know, even if you have an older Tesla, you can benefit from a lot of the new features they're rolling out. And uh, I haven't seen any vehicle quite like that. Uh, the, Tesla is really breaking the mold of vehicles, uh, vehicle ownership, um, driving experiences, uh, the connectivity, servicing. Uh, servicing is very easy. You can drop your vehicle off at a Tesla service center. And a lot of times when they're finished with the service, you can just go into your vehicle and, uh, you know, open it with your phone. And then they have the key, you know, right in the center console and you're good to go. You don't even have to go into uh, the service department. You can pay with your, you can pay for service through your app. You can communicate and talk text with the, you know, service department through the app. Um, and believe me, <laughs> I'm in the car business. I've been in the car business, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 40, close to 43. I've been in the car business since I was 15. I have a lot of experience in automotive service departments. And Tesla is thinking outside the box. So if you don't like to hang around service departments, uh, time is valuable to you. You know, that's another thing to consider. And they also have the mobile service. I have mobile service come by all the time working on our Teslas and my own Tesla. You know, they came by, I needed a new air filter and they came by and for a nominal price, they installed a new air filter in my vehicle. I didn't have to take it anywhere. They came to me and did it and it didn't cost that much. In fact, it cost, it cost less for them to come here and, and with their mobile service and probably a lot of other dealerships would charge for me to drive my car there and have a, you know, a new cabin filter installed. Uh, so there you have it. Lots of information. Uh, any questions, appreciated it. Uh, appreciate it. Um, and thanks so much for taking your time today to watch this video. And they came by and for a nominal price they installed a new air filter in my vehicle i didn't have to take it anywhere they came to me and did it and it didn't cost that much in fact it cost it cost less for them to come here and and with their mobile service and probably a lot of other dealerships would charge for me to drive my car there and have a you know a new cabin filter installed uh so there you have it lots of information uh any questions appreciated it uh appreciate it um and thanks so much for taking your time today to watch this video